Okay, this session I'm talking about comparisons and it's almost certain that you will need to make comparisons when you are writing your task one answer for the academic module of IELTS. So let's just go through in a little bit of detail how to actually make comparisons for your task one. Now of course comparisons are something that um, come up a lot in English so you should be fairly familiar with what a comparison is. In the context of a task one answer for IELTS you've got things like X is higher, smaller, lower, faster or bigger than Y. Or, of course, you have a comparison with more, where X is more expensive, more popular, more important than Y. Now, um, I think that they're fairly simple. Remember when to use a er and when to use more with your adjectives. Notice here I've put in X and Y, and of course your X and your Y will be your variable. So let's just um, look at how comparison sentences would be used as an example in task one. So um, here are some examples. Number one, the price of coffee in the USA was higher than the price of coffee in Brazil. Number two, electronic books were more popular in England than in Germany. Number three, the percentage of females who played computer games was lower than the percentage of males who played computer games. So one point here is about the tense. In these examples, I've kept it into the past, was higher than, were, were more popular in England, um, was lower than. Now, your past simple will probably be your default tense. However, bear in mind that it could be um, a different tense depending on the time reference of the graph. Now, here's a little tip to be going with. Um, a good idea is to use that of, to make these things uh, quite long and complicated. So, if you look at um, number one and number three, we c there's quite a lot of repetition. You've got the price of coffee, the price of coffee in number one. In number three, you've got the percentage of females who played computer games, the percentage of males who played computer games. So what one thing you can do is to use that of to make your sentence a, a bit more effective. So we have the price of coffee in the USA was higher than that of Brazil. The percentage of females who played computer games was lower than that of males. So that of is a relative pronoun that um, replaces the parts of the variable there. And that's a good useful tip to use. Now, another thing with um, describing differences is it's a good idea to indicate if there is a large or a small difference. So, for example, um, here in this space you can use quantifiers. You, so you can say X is much higher than Y, X is a lot higher than Y, or X is a little higher than Y. You can also use um, adverbs. So you can say X is slightly higher than Y, X is significantly higher than Y, X is noticeably higher than Y, X is dramatically higher than Y, and so on. And that's a good thing to do when you're describing your, uh, your comparison. So that's the first um, structure you can use. There is another structure as well, which is with as. So, of course, the example would be here, X is not as high as Y. So if we look at the task one type sentences you might write, you'd have something like the price of coffee in USA is not as high as that of Brazil. The percentage of girls who play computer games is not as big as that of boys. Um, your adjective 
will be quite simple, high, big, small, those kind of words. Notice also that you can use that of in the same way that I explained earlier with this structure, you can um, do it in exactly the same way to avoid all that extra um, language there. Um, once again with as, then you can also talk about a big difference and a small difference. So here you would use nearly and quite. So X is not nearly as big as Y and X is not quite as big as Y. Nearly refers to a big difference and quite refers to a small difference. And little things like that are really good touches to improve your um, accuracy of writing there and to help you get a bigger score. So um, we've looked at uh, the standard comparison structure. We've looked at how to use as. Now, the other thing that we need to look at with comparisons is that of superlatives. Previously, we were comparing X with Y. Now, with superlatives, we're going to describe one thing with a group of others. So let's just look at the examples. X was the fastest. X was the most expensive of all the categories. So, of course, with superlatives, you're going to use the suffix EST, um, fastest, or you're going to use most with the adjective there. So, let's look at some examples of how superlatives are used. So, number one, the production of coffee was highest in Brazil. Brazil reported the highest production of coffee. Complaints about noise were highest in Hong Kong. Hong Kong experienced the highest number of complaints. Sugar candy was the most popular among the five-year-old group. The five-year-old group said that sugar candy was the most popular type. So notice that here there are basically two ways of um, giving your superlative. You either start with the production of coffee or you start with Brazil or you start with complaints or you start with Hong Kong. Um, and there are two ways to approach it usually. Once again, it's difficult to give specific patterns because it very much depends on the graph you have. But these are some good examples that you can use um, for giving superlatives. The other point to note is that superlatives often come up in your overview where you describe the main trends. So you might want to use these sentences there. If you're not sure about the overview, just check out the video on how to write overviews, um, which is the overall how to answer task one section in the training area. Okay, now um, we've covered the structures. Um, one thing to watch out for is the common mistakes, because in task one, it is the details that matter. So try and check your grammar with your comparison statements. Now, here are some examples of mistakes that come up. So here is the typical thing where you mix um, the different forms. So the price of coffee in Brazil was more higher than that of USA. Of course, that one is wrong. Another one is where you do not give the correct form. So you've got things like the number of radio listeners was more big in the morning. And then um, with as, you might get a combination. The number of people cycling to work was as bigger than those who drive cars. And finally, make sure that your adjective form is correct. So ice cream was more popularly in June than in January is wrong. Um, I do suggest that you go through these things carefully and check them because they're going to drop your grammar score if you make these kind of mistakes. 
Okay, so that's um, a run through how to make comparisons. Um, have a little practice at doing those because they are sure to come up in some way when you get your task one question in IELTS. If you want more information, um, move on to other videos in the series about some of the other skills.